The show is about to start. Thank you for your cooperation. Enjoy the show, and please come back and visit us again. Quite the laid back open to the show this week. Nine years podcast, everybody. Episode 118, Thursday, the 25th of January 2018, with Nick Draper. And yes, making his glorious return to the show this week. More Big Mac than Fleetwood Mac. It's Crawley's number one Ray Wilkins tribute act, Mr. Stuart Deacon. Stu, where have you been? We've had search parties out, scouring the country. Well, you know, here and there. We've been worried. What's going on? Well, I sort of, um, I've been struck down by whatever, I don't know, there's lots of bugs going around and I um, end up losing my voice, which um, sort of puts a little bit of a span in the works when you're doing a podcast. It might improve your input. Possibly, it probably makes me sound more sensible. Um, but as you can probably tell, I'm still gradually getting my voice back, which, um, yeah, after losing it, which is never, it's very disappointing when you lose your voice, especially when someone like me who loves to talk. Mm. Um, so, yes, I've been... I've been sparingly using my voice when it's only talking when necessary. So, of course, a a Thursday podcast is always necessary. Always necessary. And I've got to say, as a teacher, I appreciate, yes, losing your voice is not the best thing in the world. I think there was once when I decided we weren't going to speak at all one day and no one said a word for the whole day. That was the best day ever. I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did, actually, to be honest with you. How do people not talk? I literally sit at work and I go to people, do not talk to me. And I break that within about half an hour. I just can't not talk. It's not well, normal. We had to find other ways of communicating. It was an experience. I can it, tell. I imagine that's what it has, what it's like at the Emirates most weeks. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> you have picked a good week to return as we're talking managerial changes this week and wondering what clubs hope to achieve with their higher and fire them policies that has resulted in four, count them four, League One bosses losing their jobs in the space of a week. I look ahead to the weekend's trip to Bradford, the George Long Road to Wembley, and our MK Sign competition, which we ran on Facebook, all to come this week. But first, the important 2 0 win over Blackpool from last Saturday. And Stuart, I must start. Well, actually, I've got to start with an announcement. Blackpool. You're a stupid idiot. And you just. And you just. And you just... <laughs> I got you, right? You thought you were going to be a... You you gonna... <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. You just made the list! And I also have an observation. We deserve to win this game. But, you know, it was far from the great performance many seemed to think it was. It was dire, to be honest, as a game. If you were a neutral at that game, you would have been so bored. It was an awful game of football. Basically, we've won because we didn't make mistakes at the back and Blackpool did you think that's unfair um no but I think in this stage of season it's a very much a, a result business game isn't it so no one's going to really remember the performance everyone's going to go and just know you're going to come over to the result um yeah I, obviously I missed I missed Saturday because I was feeling as I were passed it to my wife so we couldn't even get to football but so I missed it but I've watched uh, extended highlights and, and stuff like that but you know what at this stage of season I suppose do you want a good performance? And you know, we've had many a time we played really well and not got nothing. Or do you really want to be hard working, nothing too exciting, but actually when you get chances, take them. And um, that's where the like, you know, two good goals, uh, you know, ball through the middle that Brat will deal with, and then try to go into the box late. Um, and then you got your, your typical debut goal from Mister Pickett. Do you say typical debut goal? Is that a thing? Yeah, typical. It's. It's not uncommon, is it? You know, it, we always said, you know, we need to pick a couple of people somebody scoring goals. So we're either going to get pick up someone from loan uh, from our 21, under 21s, or you pick up someone scoring goals. And I'd always pick up someone scoring goals because they know where the net is. So wasn't, I wasn't overly surprised that he got a goal because that's what he's been doing all season. I'm going to speak more about Joe Piggott and our attacking options in a moment. I just want to go back. Extended highlights. Really? 
Well, they what did they? That. I was going to say, what did they find? Well, they don't ten minutes. I think about a minute of that was showing them coming on the pitch and going off the pitch. Right, oh, great. Um, there wasn't much. Like for what? Like I say, I think you're spot on what you're saying. There wasn't really many other chances apart from that. But do you know what? I'll take that. I'll take that. I think this stage of season is a case of it's a result. It's a result business. No one's going to remember the performance. You know, in in ten games time, we're going to go. Oh, do you remember that? Great performance against Blackpool. We won. All we're going to do is go. We won two 0 that's, that's the business now. It's just got to win the games. Now, I agree with you completely, and I'm not complaining, by the way, in any way, that we've, the game was rubbish, because we won. And as you say, that's all that's important. We dug it out. We put a shift in. We deserve to win on the day for the shift and the hard work and the effort we put in. I think my issue more with the reaction to it was, I think, it's almost like people don't seem to accept how bad we are, which sounds ludicrous, I know. But going way back when to the Bristol Rovers game earlier in the season. We won 3-1 at Bristol Rovers and there was all this talk about turning points and everything and all the messages we're getting out of the club is that we're underperforming and such and such and everyone's like, we're a good team, we've just been unlucky, we've just made mistakes and we're going to start rocketing up the table. No. Why is it so black and white? We are we are a bottom six, bottom eight team. On, I mean, that's just the, that's the truth of the matter. And anyone watching that game on Saturday would come to that same conclusion. So can we not just be happy that we're going to win and we're going to edge out of the relegation zone like we did without almost it seems to me that every single time we pick up a three points it's a case of not that everyone's going right we're going to stay up it's great it's right now our season finally starts well no our season is picking up results like we did on Saturday to keep ourselves out the bottom four and that is it I think I just I don't know I think I'm finding the I just want a little bit of honesty almost and I don't feel like I'm getting that Am I alone in thinking that? Am I going mad? Uh, I think I think you've got fans that genuinely want us to start and put a run together, but it's it's almost impossible to do that realistically. You know, I think we've got to look for results first. Results, get the results we can. Um, don't get me wrong. You know, signing a goal scorer could be the best thing we did. You know, Peter could end up. You know, he could. I think we're difficult. I think we're difficult to beat. You know, we went obviously to franchise and. We didn't really like losing that game, even with a reserve goalkeeper in. So I think we have a solid base, you know, the three, you know, the two centre halves, the three central midfielders, and you've got to say Lyle working hard upstairs, you know, up, up top. We're a hard team to beat. We just need to add them goals. And, you know, it might be a case that Pivot is the answer. We need a couple more, probably. But I, I must admit, now that we've signed a goal scorer, I don't see us being in too much of a problem, if I'm being truthful. I think we're, we're difficult to beat. A lot of teams around us concede a lot of goals. We don't tend to. We've only really got smashed a couple of times. No disgrace in Wigan, uh, who are doing that to everybody, and away at Oxford. But that's the only time I can really say we've got on sort of like our backside spanked in this figure of speech. Apart from that, we're quite solid. So out of all teams down there, we're fine. La Taylor's doing a good job upstairs. Upstairs, up top. Up All top. Right. He, you know, he leads. La is basically like a third to fourth defender, isn't he? Uh, he works so hard that he, you know, he's a defensive forward if there is a, a such a thing. Defends from the front, yes, absolutely. Just as long as, you know, I'm, my knowledge of him is restricted to what he does on the foot pitch. Whatever he does <laughs> elsewhere, not really interested, to be honest with you. It's a good point, though. You look at our defence, and that is basically why we've won the game and why our form has improved, I think. And it's mainly because we're not making the mistakes we were. And I look at the four defenders here, all right, four four defensive players, however you want to phrase it. You've got Darius Charles, Dead Josh Elijah, George Long, and Will Nightingale, okay? My worry is what happens next season. Half of those names, I will guarantee you half of those names, I know it's only two, two of those four, will not be here next season. I don't think George Long will be here next season. I think Deji Oshalaja will be moving up a division next season. I think someone's going to come in for him. Okay, Will Nightingale. I love Will Nightingale. He's got another injury. It's a recurring theme at the minute. It's a bit of Jonathan Meads esque at the moment. Okay, so what do we do if we lose that core of players? Because that core group is really what's keeping our heads above water, in my opinion, right now. It's the fact, like you said, defensively, we are showing ourselves to be very, very good. Yeah, I think you just naturally evolve, don't you? Do you know what? I'm not, I'm not overly convinced that we will lose Deji in the summer. I'll be honest with you. I think there's definitely something that teams in the Championship are scared of going anywhere near Deji. 
And I think he's right. I think that's going to be something that's always going to be um, something that the championship side stay away from. Um, I can only really see maybe a bottom four, bottom five championship clubs, some of maybe like Burton, someone like that, maybe going for him. But I just think that's his height is always going to be the, the thing that keeps clubs away. So I'm not overly, I'd be more worried about losing Darius, I mean, truthful. I think he's more of a one that will catch because he's got all the qualities. He's at a good age. He'd be my worry. George Long, yeah, I don't think there's any way we'll keep him. I hope we have a go. I hope we have a try and put some sort of package together. But then, is it, you know, Joe McDonald the other week, I know you can't base a season on one performance, but he gave me a lot of, um, what's the word, a lot of encouragement. He's done a lot of good work in the background um, and was very accomplished, wasn't he? You know, he had a comfortable clean sheet. Do we look at him next year or do we go for a loan? I think they're replaceable. I think they're replaceable. Will Nightingale, I agree with you. I don't think it's a major injury, it's a knock. Um, but yes, he does keep picking him up. All I would say, he's not picking up, he's not picking up sort of like four or five month injuries now, which is a bit more encouraging. Now, we spoke earlier, or you spoke earlier about Joe Piggott and attacking options. And I've said there defensively, that's why we're doing better at this present time. That's why we are out of the relegation zone currently on our good run of form. Creatively, we're a bit rubbish. This is why I say all this expectation that we're going to start motoring up the table isn't going to happen because going forward, we're we're poor. Okay, Lyle Taylor aside, well, Lyle Taylor's, what is it now? One goal in open play from the last eight, I think. A couple of penalties thrown in the mix with Terrence Mount. Cody McDonald just hasn't scored goals this season. Just hasn't done it. I had a little bit of a spurt at one point, but aside from that, not happening for him. Andy Barcham, what's he been doing lately? Goals, assists, can't think of any. Harry Forrester can't even get in the team. So, are we really banking on Joe Piggott to feed off scraps? Which is basically what he did on Saturday against Blackpool. His goal came from feeding off a scrap. He will do, but it's the way... The thing is, is the way we are defensively sound, we're defensively sound because of how we set up. So, we effectively play an extra body in that spine to protect. So, if you... It's like anything. If you want to be defensive, sometimes you have to sacrifice something elsewhere. And we are sacrificing our attacking intent, if I'm being honest with that. So we are going to pick up scraps because we're going to be we're going to be a horrible, ugly little team. Like, it's like little, not little by stretch. But we, I think this season we're just going to be a, a real horrible, ugly team that does hopefully the basics right. And that's probably what gets us our results because we, we're so set up. We're so defensive the way we're set up that actually creative players in our team don't get the numbers. We don't flood. We don't flood the midfield enough. We don't give them a ball in attacking areas. We we graft, and it's not a surprise Harry Forrester can't really make edgeways in this team because it's not set up really for someone. He wants. He needs. He needs possession. He needs the ball. He needs it in good attacking areas. Really, all we're going to be doing is playing a lot more direct and really working on the fact of Cody, Joe Piggott, Lyle working really, really hard, and that's why it stifles Andy Barcher as well because. Really, when do we get the ball in any area where we can maybe overlap or anything like that? We don't. We're just we're very defensive. That's what we are. And I've got no problem with this whatsoever. Okay, you say though no. it's it's a little bit it, well, it is boring, but it wouldn't it would be less boring if we had like I've said to you all along if we have gone in from day one and admitted that's what we're going to be doing and that's what we are. Because that's what Wimbledon used to do, by the way. Yes, we had a lot of <laughs> in talented individuals who could produce fantastic moments of quality. But that's always, we've had that at times this season. Pretty much Lyle's been that and Harry Forrest has been that. But really, like you said, horrible team to play against, just battling in, really grafting, okay? And, yeah, picking up scraps where, as and when we can. Fine. No problem with that. No issue with that whatsoever. Let's just not pretend any different. That's all I'm saying. Let's not pretend, and let's get on to my favourite subject and your favourite subject now. Let's not pretend that Liam Trotter is driving this team forward. Okay, and turning us into a successful attacking team and influencing games in a big way. Okay, because that's, that's you've just said it yourself there. It's it's a lie, basically. <laughs> We've essentially played percentages a lot of the time, haven't we? That's what we're doing now, and you can trace it all the way back through all our recent games and our recent form, all the way back to Bradford game just before Christmas, where we've got a goal. Cody McDonald gets in behind from a long George Long clearance. Happened again on Saturday. Lyle Taylor gets the ball, picks up wide. 
moment of quality. Other was very little moments other than that. But you know, if you look at, I'll give you an example of the team that we played earlier this season, we beat quite comfortably. When Rotherham come down to our place, I could, you know, you and I could see how they were set up. Defensively minded, solid, long balls to keep them all the time, wasn't it? And he caused, he caused teams all sorts of problems. We dealt with him really well that night. But that's because we've got some very good defenders. But I, I look at the way we're set up and I don't think we're too dissimilar to a team like Rotherham. Look at Rotherham now. They just got they got rid of Keeper Moore. He went back to Ipswich, and has he signed for anyone else yet? I think he has, hasn't he? He has, and I will. It will come back to me. Is now, yeah. But if you think about it, what have they gone for, what have they gone to replace that? Michael Smith, same sort of player. And in, in a week, he did really well. I think he got a, he got a goal or assist against Bradford. But they have a certain way of playing. Long diagonals, set pieces. All right, that's not our strength for the moment. It should be the amount we get. But when you know, Rotherham are sitting in the round of playoffs, if you get, I think, I agree with what you're saying, but I think if you get your, we we kid ourselves by thinking we can play football. We did it at the start of the season. We thought we were a passing team. We were not. We actually are better suited to a long ball team. And I can see us going doing quite well as a long ball team, but we sort of got caught in this little bit of a trap of going, let's play some nice, pretty, attractive football. Unless you're someone like Wigan who got quite a lot of money, that ain't going to get you to too far. I actually want us to be a bit more attacking, long ball, direct, horrible, nasty, but with a little bit more of a creativity in, in those, you know, the old women of old bypassed the midfield, but the midfield squeezed so high up, they joined in once you got to the final third. We, we sort of like caught in between two stools. And let's talk about midfielders joining up then and pushing up and perhaps pouncing on second balls. Liam Trotter. This is what I mean when I said earlier about it's almost there's no shades of grey with our supporters at the moment, it seems. And I don't mean supporters, it just seems in the club as general. Liam Trotter is either rubbish or he's really, really good. All right. I would contest that on Saturday he was fine. He was fine. But no more than that. He got the goal, which was good. Very, very good. Got into the box as he should do. That is his role now, especially now Jimmy Abdu's in the team to do more of the defensive side. You can you can technically give him the assist for the second goal. I think that's being very generous. He's just pumped a loose ball back in without even looking as he just put it into an area. I mean, has he not? Look, has he not? I can only go by the TV. I can only go by the TV pictures. But he's hooked a ball in. What you get with Liam Trotter is experience. He's been around a block enough, hasn't he? And I think he's just knocked it back into an area where he thinks the forward's going to be. But I think the 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 limb trotter of the beginning of the season sometimes clouds people's judgment now. And I think you, you know, you, I know you're not because I know you're very fair with that. But I think some people go, "Oh, it's a, it's a bit of a hopeful ball." But if someone else had played it, oh, what vision? Do you know what I mean, I think sometimes it depends. I think Liam Trotter's doing a really, really good job at the moment. He's but he's in a role that's not effective. He's just there to rate things up, use the experience, read the danger, spell the danger. And he's chipping with a few goals, which he can do. It's a great finish on Saturday. He did take his goal very, very well, it must be said. And we and I have said earlier in the season about how he has this laid back style about him and that's just his personality. That helps him out on Saturday actually, because he had great composure the way he finished that. We've saw against Milton Keynes that our players lacked composure in certain well, in and around the box. He certainly wasn't lacking composure, he took the goal very, very well. So fair play to him. I just, I still contest, like I say, I've mentioned there, I'd be gutted next season if we lose Deji, George Long will be a loss, Darius will be a huge loss. These players will be big misses should they go. Liam Trotter, it, it, he won't be. If he goes, we'll be fine. We'll be fine if he's there, we'll be fine if he's not there, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I get what you mean on that. I think, you know, it very much depends how we set up next season. We, I don't feel we need a I don't think we need Saws, Trotter and Jimmy Abdu in the midfield. I think they're very similar players. Um, I think Jimmy and Jimmy Abdu and Liam Trotter are probably the most suited. And, and on the current form, I, I like Jimmy Abdu. He's everything the Millwall fans kept saying he was. And now he's getting a run of games. I really like him, the energy and stuff like that. I probably would sacrifice Trotter over Jimmy Abdu. And also the thing is, they're both on big salaries. You know, we... We have a lot of our, and Tom Saws is probably not on a, on a stupid, you know, on a silly wage. So we have 
a lot of our salary, our wage, tied up in a defensive midfield, when I would really rather sacrifice something in that area and shift it on into the attacking areas because it's like anything you get what you pay, you get what you pay for, do you? I know Kevin Boris will be listening very, very worried about the amount of sacrificing you've been doing this week in these ritual slaughters of people. But I would, I was, I should even say, going to speak about set pieces. I think we've probably pushed for a little bit of time now. Maybe we can look at it again next week following the Bradford game. But set pieces, just keep an eye out on these. We are the worst team in all the football league converting goals from corners. And we do seem offensively, in attacking sense, very, very bad at set pieces. So we shall probably return to that subject next week. But obviously, like we said earlier, if we are going to be this more direct battling team, we need to be more productive from corners, don't we? It's, it's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's oh, a simple yeah, question, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right, Don's three-word reports then from Twitter before we finish off the Bradford game. Hashtag Don's three-word reports. Twitter at 9YRS podcast. First one, which I love this week came from Futz at Futz87, who simply said, frozen bollocks worthwhile. Which, to take my mind back, I, I remember being wet <clears throat> on Saturday. Not so much cold, but I can imagine it was in certain areas of the ground. Certainly, I'm sure some of the Blackpool fans most definitely. Um, what else we've got here? <sighs> at SW19 underscore Womble. I'm just going to call him that. I'm not going to give him his full Twitter handle because I'll be here until next week. It's so long these days. A crackling win. Love that. That should be the winner, actually. A crackling win. Pigs and trotters, you see. And then, yes, it's good. And then finally, uh, why not? Mark Draper at M Draper Mark, who, you know, he's remembered how to use Twitter. He's forgetting most other things these days. Tangerine Dream Crushed. Well, there was no tangerine, as we've already mentioned, for inexplicable reasons, Blackpool. Disgusted with you. But actually, that links us nicely onto our review of the week's other sort of football. Uh, another result for you in League One that took your eyes, Stu, from the weekend? Yeah, well, I've gone for one. Uh, they had uh, two games in the end of the game each week, but I've gone for Rotherham. Uh, picked out home, home win against Bombay, home win against Bradford. Um, that's pretty good going, do you know what I mean? And now touching on the playoffs... I've, they're just an ugly team. They play them. They just play an ugly tour of football, and um, I can see them picking up, picking up enough points. So I think they've had a they had a cracking week. And funnily enough, I think looking at form tables and things, they are second in the form table, and first are Gillingham, who got my result of the weekend: three-one win away at Scunthorpe. I think it was a clash of two teams, neither of which had lost in their last six or something like that. And you normally fancy Scunthorpe to be the ones that would then extend that run. But no, fair play Gillingham. i just full of admiration considering how rubbish they were when they played as a Kings Meadow earlier in the season. I think they're, I think they're still rubbish. I think they've just um, got a manager who's just basically trying to utilise their strengths, which is after the game, isn't it? Um, it's interesting because like, Scunthorpe, they're always due a sort of result like that, aren't they? They're, didn't we go up there midweek and beat them around, around about this sort of time of February time? Remember Don Polion? They're just... I just think when it gets to the business end of the season, come for are your serial chokers. Um, and I see that again this year. Um, so I'm not really that surprised. I, I don't think they're going to do much in the season. I just think they, they choke for whatever reason, whether it's just habit or it's happened before, isn't it? But it's good result for Gillingham, but they're just, um, nothing's really changed much. But obviously they're, they're playing to their strengths. And um, I think sometimes this stage of season, it's not so much a mad you need. It's more a coach. You know, you, you can go, you can be a Phil Browns as well and go and bring players in. Or you work what you got. I and mean, it looks like they've obviously bought a good coach in there. Long live Alexa Bliss. The one, the only goddess of WWE. All right, it's at this point where you're probably used to hearing us talk about some major footballing topic or something or other. And if you are listening keenly to the start of the show... You'd have heard us me mention something about managerial changes and talking about all the sackings and firings in the one this season. What you also might have noticed is we have had so many technical problems this week that I am recording this at about 4 a.m. Well, that's a lie, but, you know, quite late on Wednesday evening slash Thursday morning because 
I've been trying my best to salvage a podcast this week. Technical difficulties is an understatement. So unfortunately, there'll be no chat this week. We could not salvage the audio from Stu and I's, I'm going to say, enlightening, very fascinating, very fascinating. Those, those don't go together, but great chat we had about the managerial situation in League One. Unfortunately, that has been lost forever. And I'm going to blame George for that. Really, we lost quite a bit of this week's show, including, I'm sad to say, the George Long Road to Wembley. However, my side of the audio just about managed to save it. You'll actually hear, as I play it to you now, just how bad it could get at some points. It only goes on for about 30 seconds, though, so bear with us. Unfortunately, Stu's part of the audio and the game we lost. But for those of you that enjoy the game we do every week and enjoy the George Long Road to Wembley, if that made sense. I'm not sure I said that correctly whatsoever. I'm not sure there's any of you out there that actually do enjoy it. We might bring Abdu you back or something. I don't know. Anyway, I've managed to keep the game in this week with my half. The role of Stuart Deacons, however, this week shall be played by one Mr. Alan Partridge. But Alan Partridge is purely saying the exact same words that Stu did on this week's game. So, Enjoy. It goes on for about two minutes if that gives you in any indication as to how well Stu did this week. And we'll speak to you again on the other side. Let's get back to some tradition. The George Long Road to Wembley as we recreate or attempt to recreate Wimbledon's 1988 FA Cup winning run, of which, of course, it's the 30th year anniversary of this season. Stu, Kevin Boris last week got all the way to the fifth round. You've, he did. Uh, you've not got past round four yet, so you uh, the gauntlet has been laid down. So as we do every week, and I don't know how much longer we're going to do this, we might, I, I don't know, a couple more weeks of this year, we might see if we just do a random drawing each week and get a random club for you to answer a question on, because I'm getting bored of asking West Brom questions, but here we are again. So twice since the turn of the millennium, West Brom and ourselves have celebrated promotions in the same season. Which two seasons were they? Oh, sorry, that was just a noise. Go on, try and finish the sentence and see what I do. Ugh, oh, damn me. So, I, I guess I gathered that. So twice since the turn of the millennium, West Brom and ourselves have celebrated promotion in the same season. So we've both got promoted in the same season. This has happened twice since the year 2000. Which two seasons are they? 1993 and 1994. <laughs> hey, look, we've been knocked out in the, in the third round against you, I'm afraid. It is, it is neither of those two whatsoever. Um, in 2003, 2004, when we got promoted from the CCL, West Brom got promoted back into the Premier League. And then in 2007, 2008, we got promoted out of the Ryan Premier into the Conference South and West Brom once again reclaimed their place in the Premier League. And it was at this point where we were going to broadcast the MK Sign Caption Competition, which you might have seen on Facebook, which I introduced on the show last week. Technical difficulties <laughs> will prevent us from doing this this week. If you haven't some noticed some somewhat dodgy audio, no jokes about our audio quality, thank you. It's worse than usual. Um, yeah, we have a few few problems this week. So we do apologise, but we will go through the Facebook competition next week, and we just hope that we get through to the end of this week's show. To be honest with you, because it's been a it's been a long one, hasn't it, Stu? It might not actually be a long episode at all to everyone listening. It might be very, very short by the time we've edited this, but it feels like it's been a long one. It's been we've, we've actually spoken a lot of sense as well. We've spoken oh. a lot of sense, um, mm. but yes, we just um, yes, uh, <laughs> recording has been a problem. Um, yeah, you can tell us my first week back, can't you? It's, it's dodgy microphones, my end, it's recording problems, your end. It's all one big melting pot of awful podcast, what's the word, production. Yes. Hmm. Which, we're, but, which we're so, normally, normally we're so well known for, our high quality production values. At least we're consistent. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, let that one sink in for a minute. <laughs> so anyway, we are going to move straight ahead from the George Long Road to Wembley, if you've heard it, if we've been, if you have to produce it, I don't know, it might not be in the final edit, who knows, we don't know, so we are going to talk about Bradford game though, this should definitely make it in, Bradford, yes we visit Valley Parade for the like 25th time over the past 10 years, we've been there so often since we've been back in the Football League, bored of going, 
This time round, it is fifth versus 19th in the league. However, shoes on the other foot when it comes to form because it's 17th versus 7th in the form table. Bradford are in ter- terrible run. So just starting just before we played them at King's Meadow, really, and it's carried on through. I think they've lost four in a row now. And Matt Kilgallen, he's centre-half, isn't he, for Bradford? Centre-half? He is, yeah. yeah. Very interesting quotes following their 2-0 defeat to Rotherham on Tuesday night. He said, and I do quote, we've got a lot of lads struggling out there and we're letting ourselves down. We're not showing enough cojones and we need to get through this tough time fast and put it right. We're in for training on Wednesday, which is normally our day off. <clears throat> be a number of our fans wondering if AFC Wimbledon ever does that. The gaffer isn't happy and he's right not to be. Yeah, they're in a bit of they're in tough times. And from being thought to be up there in the mix for automatic promotion, they are battling to cling on to a playoff place now. Yeah, and it's interesting that interview as well. He also goes on to say that they've got injuries. Um, which I found really interesting that a player would go he, he, he basically they've got problems in defence they've got no right back they've got a uh, second choice left back um, and he said his squad you know it's, it's, it's quite well known that the squad's not as strong as it was last year but they've still got a good squad you know for a club of Bradford size to be moaning about injuries and stuff like that there's a lot of I think him coming out into the press and saying what he's done has shown a lot of distress signals to me um, and if I was New Arley, I would be thinking we go out there and attack them because <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. We, we chuckle because of what we just said previously about us being so defensive. But you've got to have a go. You've you've got to have a go. Surely. Um, the, the, the the most amazing thing is when you look at the league, they've lost eleven games this season. We've lost twelve. So they obviously don't draw many. But if we went there on Saturday and beat them we would level ourselves up with defeats. That's a crazy situation to be in. It's got draw written all over it, hasn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> we will go there. I think so. Do exactly think so. what we always do. And it'll be nil-nil and a bit rubbish. And we'll all be happy with it. Um, Jake Reeves, then, what's going on? He's been struggling chiefly amongst this Bradford side at the moment. He's not For a team that you say there has mentioned injuries, apparently, Jake Reeves can't get into the team at the moment. He was substituted at half-time, I believe, on Tuesday night. Yeah, he started off so well there, didn't he? And um, he got substituted around about, what, 60 minutes against us down at our place? Um, and that seems to have started off a little bit of a... He, you know, he didn't start the game after that, and he's not seen much game time at all. Um, difficult one, isn't it, do you know what I mean? Because Jake is very much... Um, I suppose when it's all going right, Jake's fine, but he's... Are they looking for scapegoats there? Are they going, well, do you know what, it's the new ones coming in. Yeah, if if you've got a team that's not fighting, Jake's not going to beat people up. Uh, Don Polo up front, he'll go missing when he's not going right, won't he? So we sort of know from Don Polo down at our place, you know, when it weren't going well, Don went missing. You know, is he doing the same at Bradford? But they've got some problems, haven't they? And you have to wonder, Stuart McCall must be under some pressure. If the clubs have sacked, you know, Oxford have sacked their manager and, and South End, Stuart McCall must be in in trouble as well because, again, they spend quite a lot on they're seriously underperforming at the moment. Well, prior to our last conversation, which may or may not, Ed, let's hope he's not in trouble. <laughs> let's hope Bradford stick with him and help him through this tough patch, this rough spell. They still have some quality, a lot of quality players you've mentioned there. Paul Taylor seems to be amongst the goals regularly at the moment. Scored against us just before Christmas. Scores a spectacular goal, doesn't he? Lots of spectacular goal. He's the threat. Charlie White. What's going on with Charlie White? Top scorer still. He's not one of the injuries, is he? No, for what I see, he's been playing. But again, he needs, I suppose, he needs service, doesn't he, as well? So, uh, for whatever reason, you know, they're, they're, when I when I see the highlights on TV, they're just conceding crazy goals, silly goals, and um, it's like anything. Confidence is a fragile thing, isn't it? So, yeah, I would love us to go there and we have a go at them. I know we're not because we don't do that to teams. But if you're going to play somebody at a moment, you know. You want to be playing teams like Bradford, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And it's certainly on paper a better time to be playing Bradford than it would be to be playing Rotherham the following Saturday. But we'll talk about that next week, of course. Uh, does You talk about having a go at them and taking the game to them. I guess, would Joe Pickett starting be an indication that that's the intention? Yeah. I, I wasn't surprised that he was sub, obviously, for the home game to Blackpool. You would think another week's training 
Um, you think? I think you go there with. I, I think away from home, you definitely go with a, a sort of target man. Joe Pickett isn't your, your normal target man, but he's not weak in the air by any stretch of imagination. Um, but it depends. I would like to see. I'd like to see Pickett and Cody together because Cody plays well with a target man, uh, but he can't drop Lyle. But then, can you find a role for Lyle? Can you find a role out wide right? It depends really how he goes there, but. I suppose realistically you go there and you take a point away from Bradford you go job done um, but the brave manager would go there and try and win and I hope that is Neil Ardy on Saturday Just looking at this Bradford team from the defeat to Rotherham on Tuesday, uh, yes Tuesday night nothing really to mention there of any particular notice I think they finished the game with 10 men because of injuries by the looks of it Rotherham's team they have a lot of nouns in their team this is so random, I do apologise, but I was just laughing. Such a teacher, Colin. Well, I'm just looking, they've got Wood. Well, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Maybe in more ways than one. But they've got Wood, they've got Ford, they've got Towel. He's good at soaking up the pressure. They've got Ball, they've got Smith. They have a Price, a Taylor. It's just historically, of course, names like Smith and Taylor, of course they are professions. But just, just musing there really the Bradford team it's like it's like a Wimbledon team but not it's some of the names you've got obviously Reeves Poli on Wimbledon teams but Taylor and Robinson as well I'm thinking Guy I'm thinking this is a Wimbledon team obviously not totally different people of course but just yeah oh, okay I'm waffling prediction 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 um do you know what I'm gonna surprise you I think we're gonna go away with a 2-1 win I'm gonna say nil-nil Surprise, surprise. Well, yes. I just have a feeling. They won't lose again. I think they've lost their last four. I can't. I think they'll probably just dig in, get back to basics, not do anything stupid, and settle for a point just to get themselves to end their bad run. And I think Yeah, I agree, but it's a home game, isn't it? Like, are the home fans going to accept that? That's, that's, the, that's how it could go. Are the home fans going to accept... Your typical, you know, nil nil, get back into not losing habit. I don't think their fans are going to want. They're going to accept that. So, the worst thing they could probably be at the moment is actually playing at home on Saturday. They probably could do with playing away and doing what you say, just getting used to not losing again. But we'll see. We'll see. I think we've got a good chance to win now on Saturday. What else are you looking forward to at the weekend? This is where I would love to say that I've done my research. I have. Oh. There's nothing going on. There's nothing going on. What, really? a rubbish, what a rubbish set of fixtures. The only one I saw was Oldham Plymouth, which is obviously down at the bottom end. I didn't see anything else that really excited me. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Did you, did you notice the phrasing of my question this week? It wasn't what other fixture in League One are you looking out for. It was what else are you looking forward to at the weekend now? Would you like to know, know what I'm looking forward to at the weekend? I don't know. Can I ask? It's the Royal Rumble, Stu. Oh, that's the that's that one where they all run in at certain minutes, don't they, and then get knocked out. Yes, and then is that it? Yeah, and there's two this year because the, for the first time ever there is a there is a female lady Royal Rumble. Oh, mm. they've got enough girls to compete in that. Well, they will do by the time it starts. Yeah, there's going to be 30, 30, 30 women Royal Rumble and a thirty man Royal Rumble. And Before the ladies start injuring themselves again, uh, I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm sure they'll be fine. If anyone's wondering. Who are my predict my my predicts? That's not a word. My Pixar, <laughs> who make great animated films. Pixar, uh, uh, yeah, okay. It's very very late. <laughs> I think I'm losing the world to live. Uh, Asuka for the women's one, and Shinsuke Nakamura, the former Celtic winger, will win the men's one. In my humble opinion. So I can't wait. I'm more looking forward actually to the takeover, the NXT takeover, the night before. As always, I'd normally look forward to the NXT show more than the main show. Just one of those things at the moment. Mm. Oh, well. Pretty much brings our show to an end, we think, possibly, maybe, at some point, however long this show's been, we however it sound, it. What, whatever it sounds like, <laughs> however it's been pieced together. Yeah, messy is the word, I think. Anyway, before we go, mention 9YRSpodcast.org, Andy Dixon. You may remember him. I think he was slow train to Anfield on the WAP guestbook back in the day and he is writing our match reports now on our website for us so Blackpool Match Report is up there now if you haven't read it check it out please do so 
There was one from the week before as well, so thank you very much, Andy. Have a look at those. And other than that, it is time to say goodbye. So thank you for listening this week. Thank you for putting up with us this week. We got there in the end. Thank you very much, Stu, for joining me, especially given your, your ill health at present. No problem. Also must say, updates from Bradford will be available on Twitter, at Nine Wires Podcast, and also Facebook Live. Marco Cura will be presenting for us from up in the, what is it called? It's Valley Parade, isn't it? It is? Yeah. They give it some fancy name. It's Valley Parade. Marco Cura, so please join us on Facebook for that, facebook.com slash 9 podcast. And yeah, just thank you again and join us please next week. Next week we're going to be joined by the New England Women Manager, Phil Neville, about diversity in the workplace. Alexa Bliss, bag first, milk last, and we will speak to you again next week. Smoking in the glory day